Black Santa Church family and to those that are partnering with us. As, as we come together for our midweek Bible study, I just thank God for us being able to come together once again um, on this virtual platform and to those that are present in the sanctuary. God is an awesome God. Uh, as, as we go forward tonight, we're still in the series Lining Up with God. Lining Up with God. Tonight, a, as we go forward, I want to deal with that subject, this subject in that series, God's Ways Prepares Us for the Future. God's Ways Prepares Us for the Future. And we, we, we got to remember now in this series, we're talking about believers lining up with God. The benefit of being in step, the benefit of being in tune to God prepares us for whatever is to come. Uh, tonight, I want to lift one verse that we're going to focus on tonight. One verse uh, from the book of Psalms. Uh, we want to go over to 138 in the book of Psalms, lif lifting uh, one stanza, verse 8. And the word of God is for God's people, and, and it speaks truth to us. Uh, verse 8 reads as follows in Psalms 138. It says, the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the works of your hands. Here it is. In this one particular verse, the writer says, the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. And your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. This is a powerful piece of scripture if we would take it and allow it to become a part of our spirit. Because so often in life, many in the body of Christ think that it's, it's left up to them to make things happen. Whether it's just to make more money, whether it's trying to use money, things, uh, power, and position to make everything better. But in reality, it's, it's never because of what you have. It's never because of what you think you can do. In reality, it's because of what God can do. God wants the focus of the believer to be on him and not our income, not our possessions, not this world that we even live in. You see, we need him more than we need money. We need him more than we need possessions. We need him more than we need friends. We need him more than sometimes we need family. We, we need him. But the writer says, the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. God knows. God knows the direction we need to take to accomplish the goals he has set for us. God knows the direction we need to take to accomplish the goals he has set for us. The Bible tells us he knowed us before the foundations of the world were ever laid. Our future has always been in God's hands as believers. It's, it relieves the stress of life when you allow God to have his way in your life. We're talking about being in step, lining up with God. You can't be in line and in step with God if you don't trust him enough to allow him to orchestrate your life. God's ways prepare us for the future. He knows the future. You don't have an idea or a clue about what's around the corner. And as we're going through this study tonight, I really want you to understand, you don't even know what's going to happen in the next hour, let alone the next week, month, or year. You can't even control the next 30 minutes. But God has all of that 
in his ability to take care of us. So the, the scripture says, the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the works of your, your hands. The writer says, don't forsake the works of your hands. He doesn't even mention his own hands, but he says, Lord, whatever it is you're put, putting in motion, don't forsake it. In other words, don't take it for granted. Pay close attention to whatever you are doing on my behalf. I, I, I just stopped by to tell somebody tonight, I want God to be attentive when he's working on my situation. I want him to be paying attention, close attention to the works that he's putting in place for my life. My future is in his hand. But when our desires and our motivations are set on selfish gain, just so when we can say we have more, we're not living to the fullest or living the way that God wants us to live. If, if all our desires is for more, and if all our desires is to, to gain, then we're not living to our fullest, and we're not living the way God wants us to live. We end up settling for much less than we could have if we had surrendered our lives and allowed him to guide us just allowing him to guide us. God's ways prepares us for the future. There are three things I'm just going to share with you tonight in reference to God's ways. And God is always very explicit in his instructions. When, when God gives instructions, he doesn't leave out intricate details. He gives you exactly what you need to know if you're obedient in order to complete the task. Sometimes in life, we want more information than, than is necessary to complete the task because we want to know the mind of God, but God doesn't owe us an explanation for what instructions he is giving us to complete a certain task in our lives. All we have to do is just be obedient and follow his instructions. The first thing that I want to share with you is he will often give us insight into what is going to happen. He will often give us insight into what is going to happen. God doesn't leave us in the dark or leave us blind when he's moving in, in our lives. He will give us insight. And when you line up with him, that's one of the benefits of walking in step with God is that he'll give you insight to what is going to happen before it ever happens. A lot of folks will say, well, I had a gut feeling. It wasn't a gut feeling for the believer. It's the Holy Spirit. It's the unction of the Holy Spirit that's warning you on the inside of something that's going to be played out in the natural world, but it's giving you a forewarning of what's about to happen. When he does, it's our responsibility to trust him and, and, and not to look at our surroundings, those, those things going on around us, and question his ability. When God gives us insight into what is to come, it's, it's not for us to try to figure it out or wonder about why these things are happening around me or even question his ability. When he calls us to do something, he provides us with the strength we need and the way to get it done. He gives us the strength and then he gives us the way to get it done. But first of all, he gives you insight into the things that are to come. I, I just want you to hold on to that. A lot of times we miss out on the insight because we're paying too much attention to the noise that's going on around us. But God is always speaking to us through his Holy Spirit for those believers who are trying to walk in step with him. The second thing is the task 
will seem impossible from a human perspective. I want you to get that. The task will seem impossible from a human perspective. The task will seem impossible from a human perspective. In many cases, the way he speaks to us will be right in line with the mission he gives us to do. God will work in our lives in such a way that we will know that he is acting and cannot deny it. We cannot deny it. God will make some things. Have you ever had some things happen in your life and you knew God orchestrated it because everything just seemed to fall in place? There were no bumps, no glitches, no hitches. It, it started and it finished. It went smooth as butter. It, it, it just happened. And, and you couldn't take any credit because you had already exhausted yourself trying to do some things your way. But it didn't work out. But when God stepped in, the thing that seemed impossible from a human perspective, God got it done. And, and, and the key to this is, so when our faith is challenged, we will recall what God has done. And we will stay the course rather than yield to the feelings or doubt of doubt and fear. We'll stay the course rather than yielding to the feelings of doubt and fear. Our past victories ought to serve notice to us when new challenges show up, all you have to do is look at some things that have happened in your past where God has stepped in and the task seemed impossible from a human perspective. But when God engaged and got involved with you, things started to happen that you couldn't explain, but you couldn't deny that God was acting. When our faith is challenged. We have to recall the past victories in order that we'll understand that God wants us to stay the course rather than yielding to fear or doubt. The third thing, the third and final thing tonight I want to share with you is God's plan requires faith. God's plan requires faith. The text says, the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. I wonder how many of us believe that tonight, that the Lord is going to perfect anything or everything that concerns you. I wonder how many are walking in such a way by faith that you understand God is at the helm, that he's in charge, that he's perfecting this thing. In other words, there may be some glitches you may see, but you don't understand behind the scenes, God is working this thing out in your behalf. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. The writer had utmost faith in God's ability. I wonder how many of us as believers are truly walking in step with God that we have the utmost faith in God's ability. I wonder how many of us are really at that place in our life where we are trusting God beyond what we can see or feel, what others can tell us. We are believing even when doubt shows up, we are pushing doubt out of the way because we have a faith that says God can do anything but fail. The writer says, the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. He took himself right out of the picture. In the context of that one verse, he never says that I can perfect. He says, the Lord will perfect or make it perfect, that which concerns me. God's plan requires faith. God will open a door of opportunity in your life but he will not push you to go through it. I wish somebody heard me tonight. God will open a door of opportunity, but he will not push you through it. 
Too many folk are waiting on God to push them. God ain't going to push you. He'll give you opportunity. He'll open a door, a window, an opportunity for you. But it's going to be of you to make the decision to go through and to embrace the promise and enjoy the blessing. It's, it's going to be up to you to take advantage of the situation or the circumstance that he's put in motion for your life. He'll open a door of opportunity, but he will not push you through it. For us as believers, we must step forward. You can't accomplish anything walking backwards. I hate to say this tonight, but there's a lot of folk in the body of Christ who are walking backwards. They're not walking forward. They're walking backwards because God has delivered them through some things, but they keep returning to the same mess. Wow. The Bible says it's like a dog returning to his vomit. It's an illustration of a foul thing, but what it tries to get across if, if God has brought you out of something, why are you walking back into it? A lot of times our blessings are hindered because we won't walk forward. And, 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 and many times in the body of Christ, we are not walking forward because we want folk to walk with us so they can see what God has done for us. But, but God doesn't think like that. That's human thought. That's our selfishness. We want to prove a point to somebody. We want somebody to see what God has done for us in spite of the fact that I know I got some haters, in spite of the fact I know I, know I got some folk working against me, in spite of the fact I got some folk on the sideline waiting for me to fall so that they can cheer. I, in spite of the fact we, we know we got folk out there who are talking about you on every hand, you become the conversation that they won't have with you, but they'll have a conversation about you. We know all of this stuff, but we still won't walk forward. We're waiting, and we want God to allow us to walk with those same folk into the blessing, into a land of prosperity, so that they can see the blessing, but the blessing is not even about them. Yeah, he'll open the door of opportunity, but he's not going to push you through it. Remember Lot and his wife, great illustration. They were spared. God was about to destroy the city. He told his Lot to take his wife and family and get out of there and don't look back. But the past crept up. Lot kept walking. But his wife started to linger and remember the good times, the things that she had engaged in. And the enemy got her to the place where she looked back based on what was in her mind. Bible says she turned into a pillar of salt. He had opened a door of opportunity, but he didn't push her through it. He said, here's your way out. Go and don't look back. God is saying that to somebody tonight right in the midst of this lesson. Go, but don't look back. You ain't lost nothing there. You're not going to be short for nothing. But if you look back, it could be your destruction. Because that same enemy that tortured you when you were there is the same enemy that will draw you back in. But this time it won't be torture. It will be your death. But somebody don't want to hear that tonight. But I, I just stopped by to tell you the truth. He will not push you through an open door. Believers have to learn to start to step forward. You can't win this race walking backwards. When we do, we'll sense his presence clearly. And, and, and the way for us to travel is always forward. When we get to the place that we learn to walk forward, you're going to be able to sense his presence clearing the way. It's going to be clear, and he's going to be clearing the way for us to travel forward. It takes faith to ask the Lord to make his presence known. I've been in this long enough now. A lot of folk want the benefit of saying they have a relationship with the Lord. But how can you have a relationship with somebody and you've never been in their presence? Mm, that's, that's rough right there. How can you have a relationship 
with somebody, but you've never been in their presence. Young people today, they do a lot of tweeting and using social media, and they have relationships through social media platforms, but they never really been in the presence of the person, but through social media. Don't you know social media can allow you to be whoever you want to be, and it can be so far from the truth? You can embrace somebody, and if you ever get to know them for real, for real, the real truth about them, they may be so far from what they claim to be. But the idea is to understand as believers, I'm talking to saved folk, I'm talking to believers, I'm talking to those walking in the kingdom of God, I'm talking to those who are lining up with God. You can't have a relationship with him through Jesus Christ if you are never in his presence. You've got to be in the Lord's presence. It, it takes faith to ask the Lord to make his presence known. Because if you ask the question, Lord, just make your presence known. You have to be careful when you say that. Because the spirit of the Lord can come in and it can be a disruption to some stuff in your life. I, I, I didn't come to prophesy, but, but God can step in and make his presence known. And if it's not of him, he can destroy it can tear it up. He, he can disperse it. And you saying, Lord, I, I, I believe, I confess my faith, and, and the Lord, and you ask the Lord to let his presence be known. But the Lord knows that you're in an unholy state. He knows that you're in an unholy situation. But when he shows up, everything that's not of him, it meets destruction. It's destroyed. It's torn up. You wonder why things start going chaotic. Hey, why? It's out of control, and you can't bring it back to the place where it was, where you invited the Lord in. His presence causes those things that are not of him. They either got to flee or be destroyed. And if nothing else, then it reaffirms to you that you're walking in step with him. When you're walking in step with the Lord, his presence reaffirms to you that you're walking right. You're walking right with him. And if you're in step with him, you keep moving till he says stop. Oh, God. The writer says in verse 8, the Lord will perfect that which concern me. He says, your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. But notice what he says in the final part of that verse. He says, do not forsake the works of your hand. In other words, God, be attentive. Look closely at what you're doing on my behalf. And when you're attentive, you know where the stop signs are. Somebody going to get with me in a minute. If, if you're in step with him, you keep moving forward till he says stop. Do not forsake the works of your hands. God, all of this is in your hands. See, for the believer, really, if we are walking with the Lord, if we're in step with the Lord, then every morning you wake up. And you embrace a new day. You need to be confessing that that's the Lord's day to work on your behalf. That's if you're in step with him. Because if you're in step with him, you're surrendering the day to him by faith in order that the work that he desires for you to accomplish to glorify him will be done. The writer understood, do not forsake the works of your hands. In other words, Lord, be very attentive on how you use in me. Stay focused on my concerns and those things concerning me. For us as believers, every day we need to be moving in step with the Lord, making sure that our day becomes his day. Keep moving till he says stop. Because if he's tentative 
and paying attention to everything that he's doing in your life, the Lord is never going to put you in a situation or a circumstance that's going to cause you harm. It might be meant for your bad, but he'll work it out for your good. That's how good God is. God did it for Joseph. If you read the story in its entirety, he allowed him to go in a pit to get to the palace. But in the process, he kept harm away from him. Being in the pit wasn't no harm. It was the place where he had to be uploaded to get to Egypt. When he got to Egypt, he went to prison. But prison was the way to get him in the palace. See, and that's the problem today in our lives. Our spiritual eyes are closed. Sometimes God will allow you to go through the adversities of life, but he's going through it with you, but it's in order to get you to a better position. You're going to go through some stuff. If you serve in the Lord, if you're believing in God, and you're walking in step with him, there are some things you're going to go through. You're going to be saying to yourself, ultimately, Lord, I didn't sign up for this. Ultimately, Lord, I, I, I love you and, I, and I, I cherish you. But, Lord, I didn't mean that I wanted to feel the pain. I didn't mean I wanted to have these moments, these episodes. Lord, but I, I, I love you. But it's some stuff that, Lord, I could have probably did this without that. But God knew and understood, you're going to have to have this because where I'm getting you to, it's going to hurt worse than what you're going through right now. Some of the experiences that you're going to have after I deliver you to that place, it's going to challenge your thinking, and you're going to have to be able to stand on the fact that you're walking in line with me. That's hard. But the verse says, the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. That ought to be our cry tonight. That ought to be the thing that, 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 that everybody who's at home on this virtual network, you ought to be putting in, the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. I'm going to sleep tonight. I'm not going to worry about things in my life because the Lord is going to perfect it. I'm not going to worry about what's going on around me because the Lord is going to perfect it. He's going to work through it and make it work out on my behalf. But you got to line up with him in order to have that kind of assurance or faith. Yeah, God's plan requires faith. He'll open the door of opportunity, but he's not going to push you through it. Believers got to learn to start stepping forward. And I thank Roxana tonight because I know there are some believers in the body of Christ that serve in Roxana, who are members of Roxana that have stepped out on faith and are truly walking forward, and they know the only reason that they're surviving, the only reason they're getting through this thing is because God has got it in his hand. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. I, I, I want you to take that scripture tonight as, as I get ready to close this lesson out. I, I, I want you to hold on to that scripture and I want you to make it a part of your spirit. Let it get down. Let it be a seed planted in good soil. Put it in your spirit. And, and the more you quote it, the stronger you're going to get in your confidence in God. Writer says, the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. When you really get it in your spirit, you can say that thing strongly because it doesn't rely on you anymore doing it. Your, your strength lies in the Lord. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. That's your argument against anything that anybody will bring to you. People will bring up your past, but when they bring up your past, your argument ought to be, the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. That, that's a powerful statement. I don't care what you lay out. I don't care what the charge is, but when I face it, I'm going to say that the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. It may look dark at the moment, but I'm trusting in the Lord. 
They meant it for my bad, but he's going to use it for my good. He will perfect that, which concerns me. So, Roxana, tonight, I want you to understand God's ways prepares us for the future. In this series, we're talking about getting in step and lining up with God. This is a serious thing because you're out of control. If you're not lining up with God, you're out of control. If you're not lining up with God, you're going to be disobedient. If you're not lining up with God, you will go astray. If you're not lining up with God, you're going to miss the moment. So you got to work, and, and I keep using that word intentional around you in Bible study. I keep putting it out on the virtual platform, intentional. Your relationship, an uh, intimate relationship with God through Jesus Christ has to be intentional. You got to work at it to perfect it. So tonight as, as we get ready to go, I'm done. God's ways will prepare us for the future. First thing I said to you is he will often give us insight into what is going to happen. The second thing is the task will seem impossible from a human perspective. And third and finally, God's plan requires faith. We're talking about lining up with God. I promise you if you line up with him, you'll get a whole lot farther in this journey called life than you could ever get on your own if you would just line up with him. Verse 8 of Psalms 138 ought to become one you ought to highlight in your Bible. It ought to become a part of your meditation. It ought to become a part of your prayer life. It ought to be so deep in your spirit that every time something negative tries to show up in your life, that first line ought to just come out your mouth. It ought to resonate in your spirit. Every time the uh, demonic force tries to take you into a different position or try to alter your state, you ought to be speaking that first line. The Lord will perfect that, which concerns me. I don't have the ability to do it. Saying you're right. If it was left up to me, you'd win this fight. But it's not left up to me. I'm talking to somebody tonight. I, I, because I want somebody to know tonight that the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. You got to stand on that. If you're going to get the victory, you got to be willing to stand on that by faith and trust God to the highest level. Your faith has to become supernatural. I don't care if it's whipping you, but while it's whipping you, you ought to be repeating that statement. And he shall deliver you. He didn't say he'll think about it. I stop by and I'm telling you tonight. He shall deliver you. If you stand on his word. So I hope you got something you can hold on to tonight. As, as we're getting ready to go. I thank God for tonight. I thank God for this opportunity to share with you in this lesson. God is perfecting all of us. And saints, I want you to know something. God is still perfecting pastor. He's still working on me. I'm not perfect. But he's perfecting me. And I like that, that, that I'm in his hands. He will perfect that which concerns me. If, if it was left up to me, a lot of stuff would be messed up. But I leave it in the Lord's hand. I just trust him so much now that I don't try to figure some stuff out. Because even when it don't look right, he can make it right. And he can be working on something to work it out in a moment when you're thinking it's going left. He's already turned it right. But you just got to know who you trust. You got to trust God. So as we get ready to go tonight, I want to share a word of prayer with you. And if you're on our virtual network, please just stay for a moment and go through prayer with us. I want to bless your life. As, as we prepare to go into prayer tonight, 
I, I want us as a Rock Santa Church family and our virtual family for us to be play, praying continuously for Sister Helen Gray and her husband. Uh, I want you to be praying for Deacon James Gray as well as they are dealing with the loss of her mother. They had her home going services on Friday. Let's continue to lift them in prayer that the Lord will continue to heal them and strengthen them in this time of bereavement. And we know God is able, amen? And then tonight, as, as we go uh, in prayer, I'm, I'm going to lift up the Madison family, uh, Winfield Madison III. Most of you probably do not know him, but Winfield Madison III was a, a, a good childhood friend of mine who made his transition on Monday. Uh, he's gone to a better place. He fought a good fight. He still got the victory. And tonight I just want to lift his family up, his wife Bobby in Birmingham, uh, let them know that the Rock Sounder Church family are praying for them as they deal with their moment of bereavement and know that God does not make any mistakes. Winfield Madison was a childhood friend, but he's also uh, my fraternity brother, a member of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated. He came in through the Ada Epsilon chapter, uh, 1980 at Miles College. Uh, a great man in every right, but the Lord saw fit to call him home in his weakness. And, and I just say tonight to that family, to the brothers of, 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 of his chapter there, in Birmingham, I just say to them, uh, be strong. God knows what he's doing. And his homegoing services will be this coming Friday. Uh, and, and we're just going to say, God have your way. Amen? Amen. So let us pray. Father God, we thank you right now, even in this hour, Lord God, that you don't make any mistakes. Lord God, we so much is going on in our society today, Lord God. Uh, so much is happening around us, Father God, that we don't have any control over. Even in our city, Lord God, uh, last Saturday a young man lost his, lost his life. A young lady now is fighting for her life out of the same circumstance. And then on Resurrection Sunday in a park there in Birmingham, Lord God, a young lady lost her life, a straight-A student working on her master's degree, lost her life trying to protect some kids in a shootout in the park. But, Lord God, we know that you don't make any mistakes. And, Lord God, every time we look around on every hand, it's, it's just so much going on, Lord God. And, Lord, we just ask you to take control now, seal our hearts, help us to deal with the loss and so often we say black lives matter but Lord God they won't start mattering to other people until they matter to us strengthen us to understand Lord God that if we don't have you in ourselves it's going to be hard for other people to value us have your way God have your way in this hour our church family continue to keep us and strengthen us and then Lord God we, we're careful to give you the honor the glory and the praise for our homebound our sick and shut in those that may be in rehabilitation centers we lift them up before you right now Lord God as we depart this virtual platform and now go our different ways Lord keep us keep us safe and Lord wherever we are going you go before us and prepare the way. Have your way, Father God, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And, Father God, we thank you now for all you have done. We thank you for what you're about to do, and we thank you for what is to come. Amen, amen, amen. Just know tonight that God loves you, Pastor loves you, and, and we're looking forward to seeing you on Sunday morning for Sunday worship. May God bless you and keep you as my prayer. Have a great rest of the week, but most of all, have a great evening in Jesus' name. Amen.